Good morning everybody and a warm welcome to our online gathering on this third Sunday after Trinity. Our gathering this morning has been uh, produced in two locations, here at the Vicarage where I am at the moment and also in church. Scott this morning is our preacher and he's going to be looking at our gospel reading from Matthew Chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. You may be watching this after you've been in church to pray privately, or may have already watched this before you go to church. I hope and pray that that time in church has enabled you uh, to be refreshed and I hope and pray that our gathering 
online today will also be a blessing to you as we worship our God. Another difference in today's gathering is that immediately after the opening song we will have an all-age action song where we will uh, see two young people uh, sharing the idea that the church is about human beings and that we are bricks in the church which is people. Each of us is a brick in the church. That song's called Brick After Brick. Our opening song this morning is There's a Spirit in the Air Telling Christians Everywhere. His 
people gather round, singing out the joyful sound, giving glory to their maker. And they build each other up as they share the bread and cup to remember their Break after break after break God is building His temple Break after break He is making it strong With Christ the sure foundation And His people as the stones He is building a place He can live Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. As we prepare to make our confession let's just pause. The Word of God is living and active it judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith.
Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the words of forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Today's special prayer. Let us pray. God our Saviour, Look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 12 to 23. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.
A reading from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive.
and the meditation of all our hearts be forever guided and governed by your Holy Spirit, Lord our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There is a lot of bad news in Matthew 10. Hard times, rejection, betrayal, family division, persecution, imprisonment, beatings, lies, slander, verbal abuse and hatred. Why would anyone sign up for this? Today is Peter time the day that ordinations traditionally take place, but things are very different. They're new, in fact, and it's time to shine as Christians. In these difficult days, we need to be Christians who aren't ashamed of our faith. Compromise will win us no friends. We'll be too Christian for the worldly crowd and too worldly for the Christian crowd. So we might as well stand up and be counted. When Jesus comes to the end of his message to his disciples, after warning them repeatedly of the trouble they can expect, he does what any good leader should do. He answers the question, what's the reward for living like this? It's a fair question. Following Jesus will not win you any praise from the world. In Matthew 10 verses 40 to 42, Jesus makes three promises to those who follow him. Number one, we will connect people with God. Jesus tells us in verse 40, The one who welcomes you welcomes me, and the one who welcomes me welcome him who sent me. Notice the connection here. First, people will welcome you. Secondly, by welcoming you, they welcome Christ. Thirdly, by welcoming Christ, they welcome the Father. This verse tells us plainly, the way to the Father is through the Son. Jesus said it in a negative sense in John verses 15. Whoever hates me hates my Father as well. In today's multicultural world, where we have enshrined tolerance, diversity and pluralism as the new secular trinity, statements like that don't fit in. They are too narrow. One way to God... How dare you say such a thing? But as Christians, we don't get to pick and choose which statements of Jesus we will follow. The Bible teaches clearly and repeatedly that there is one way to God, and the only way to know him is through Jesus Christ. That truth is open to absolutely everyone, young or old, rich or poor, male or female. We all have the privilege of connecting people with God by sharing the gospel of Christ. There is a second promise in this passage for those who follow Jesus. So our number two, we will become a source of blessing to others. Verse 41 states, Anyone who welcomes a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who welcomes a righteous person because he's a righteous, will receive a righteous person's reward. We can't all be prophets or preachers, missionaries, vicars or leaders. We will all be different. When the great poet John Milton had lost his eyesight, he penned a sonnet called On His Blindness. In it, he reflects on what it means in the great scheme of things to lose something so precious. At one point, he says... God doth not need man's work or his own gifts, which is quite a rebuke to our very human pride. We think God can't do without us. How wrong we are. God was doing fine being the king of the universe before we ever came along. He doesn't need us to fulfil his duties. It is an honour that he should use us in any way, large or small. Seen in that light, Milton's famous last line, 
stands as a very personal statement of what it means to serve God without your eyesight. They also serve who only stand and wait. At any given moment in history, some people come to the forefront. There are presidents and kings, generals and activists, and famous people of all varieties. It's the same in the Christian world. Not every ordained member of our church leads a megachurch. Not every author becomes world, world famous. Not every evangelist speaks to crowded stadiums. Jesus alluded to this when he talked about some who have one talent, some who have two talents, and some who have five talents. While we like to say the ground is level at the foot of the cross, and it is in the sense that we're all sinners in desperate need of our Saviour, it's not true that we all have the same gifts, connections or opportunities. Some have more and some have less. God's, God isn't obliged to treat me the way he treats anyone else. There is only one Reverend Canon Catherine Herod. There was only one Charles Spurgeon. There's only one Reverend David Green. There is only one you. And so it goes. Jesus promises to level the playing field in a way different than we expect. We see the prophets, we rarely see those who support them. We see the great leaders, we rarely see those who stand in the shadows. But we can all win the prophet's reward. But someone must prepare the tea and coffee after the gathering. Someone must be there to welcome people in. Someone must clean. Someone must lead the prayers. Here is the amazing promise Jesus makes. Those who stand and wait in the shadows receives the same reward as the man or woman who receives all the public acclaim. You may hear people praise others like, she won thousands to Christ. Yes, but she didn't do it alone. He built a great church. Yes, but he didn't do it alone. They filled stadiums with thousands who came to hear them sing. Yes, but they didn't do it alone. Nothing great is ever done alone. Moses is a great example of that. Nothing is ever done alone. Those who wait, those who serve, those who mow the grass, those who keep the computers running, those who prepare the meals, those who open their homes for Bible study. They too are part of the team. In the Christian world, we have our heroes. We have our favourite pastors and vicars and Bible teachers and singers and Christian actors and music groups. There is nothing wrong with having heroes, but those who serve alongside them win the same reward. We can't all be prophets, but we can all win the prophet's reward. Jesus ends his message in Matthew 10 with a stunning final promise, our number three. We will be remembered for the tiniest acts of kindness. Verse 42 says, Whoever gives just a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is a disciple, I assure you, he will never lose his reward. First, look at the person, whoever. There are no limits to this promise. You don't need to be ordained, and you certainly don't need formal training to qualify for this promise. Do you have a cup of cold water? Then you qualify. Second, look at the recipient, one of these little ones. In context, Jesus is talking about the least among his followers. Jesus is no front runner. There are little ones everywhere. If you reach out to the hurting, to the forgotten, to the marginalised, to the poor, to the homeless, to anyone in need. Jesus sees your concern for the people the world can't see at all. Third, look at the action. Give a cup of cold water. Simple, inexpensive, often unseen. It requires very little preparation. As Spurgeon remarked, a cup of cold water may contain a sea of warm love. Fourth, Look at the certainty of the reward. You may think nothing of whatever you do, but Jesus remembers it forever. When we help his people, we are helping him. 
When we dry a tear or offer a word of hope, we are serving him. When we go the extra mile, even though we are already dead, tired and a bit frustrated because we don't have the time or energy and we've already behind schedule, but we do it anyway. He sees and knows what we have done and marks it down as if we had done it to him personally. What matters to Jesus are the things we can't even remember. A cup of cold water, a bag of chips to a friend, a quick phone call. One day, long after we've forgotten the frustration of this life, we will remember it and we will be rewarded. It all comes down to this. Jesus forgets what we remember and he remembers what we forget. You might even say the whole gospel is on those two sentences. Is it worth it to serve Jesus? You'll have to make up your own mind, but I can only urge you to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. It's not easy, but it's not supposed to be easy. Pick it up anyway. Follow him. Go where he leads. It's the one decision you'll never regret. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you never ask us to sacrifice for no reason. When the going gets tough, open our eyes to see eternal realities. May we not shrink back from your call, but gladly say, Here I am. Send me. Amen.
So let us come to our God in prayer. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people. For Bishop Pete and Bishop Designate Sophie, for all Christian leaders, and for all evangelicals who teach and guard the Orthodox faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Hear us. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. We pray for all governments seeking at this moment to deal with the fallout of COVID-19. We pray for those countries where there is conflict. We pray for peace. Give them the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Hear us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. We pray for our town of Thorn. For those who live and work here, and for those who visit this place. We pray for inward investment to regenerate our town and give hope to our people. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Hear us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear, or sickness. Especially we pray for Brenda as she continues ongoing treatment, for Leslie, for Ava, for Maggie, for Ron and June Cooper, for Maureen, for Albert, for Clive and for Alan. We pray for the residents of the various care and nursing homes in Thorn and for the residents of Casson's Court. We pray for all in Thorn who are suffering illness at this time. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Hear us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ crucified. And we rejoice with all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Lord of life. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. Through our lives and by our We 
draw our prayers together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. to the time of the breaking of the bread. We are here today watching this online gathering from diverse places. I know some will be watching in Wales, in Salford, in Epworth, as well as throughout Thorn and more ends. We come as people from diverse backgrounds, yet 
we also know as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all one in our Saviour. And so we now come to the time of breaking bread as a sign of our fellowship together with each other, but most importantly, with Jesus. And so we use that famous and traditional way of beginning to share bread. Those words that go back deep into uh, Jewish history, but also into Christian history too. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. So we now together break the bread. And I invite you to take a piece of the bread and to eat it. Lord Jesus, in you we are one body, in you we are one church. Help us to live out our lives in that knowledge of your love, your grace and your mercy. So let us seek God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and grant you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.
strengthen for the journey. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.